Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Tales of a Goth Girl. It is your host, Crystal Leandra, and I am so excited to be here. This is my first official podcast with one of my co-hosts. I know it currently says the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast. Don't worry, that will be changed next week and I'm going to have a new camera. Like there's all kinds of fun stuff going on. This is a lifestyle podcast. You know, I love Ghost Girl Diaries. If any of you have, you know, followed me from there to here, you've known me for years, right, with Ghost Girl Diaries, and I really kind of built my paranormal empire there. If you're not familiar with Ghost Girl Diaries, please check it out. It's ghostgirldiaries.com. It's two YouTube channels, very successful TikTok page, and also a podcast that has thousands of downloads, thanks to you guys. But, you know, I really felt restricted. I felt very restricted with Ghost Girl Diaries because You know, even some podcasts that I've done in the past, I have tried to sort of transition into lifestyle podcasts and I just, it didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. And, you know, you guys love Kat and I love Kat too, you know, because her and I like to talk about real life things, authentic things that go on, but it just wasn't a good place. It wasn't a good fit for Ghost Girl Diaries. So that is why I created Tales from a Goth Girl. I actually gave a sneak peek to this podcast last summer. So summer of 2022, if you were following me on social media, Instagram, I talked about and showed my plan for Tales of a Goth Girl. Um, at Tales from a Goth Girl. And I, I'm really thrilled that I finally have a home where I can talk about basically everything, anything else other than paranormal. I mean, my life is a dark room. I absolutely believe that. And you guys know that you've been following me for years that, you know, paranormal is my life. But I want a place where I can talk about relationships and love and friendships and just real life authentic things that we all go through. And, you know, the goth lifestyle is is a part, is who I am. It's who I've always been. And it's gate kept in a way. And I think this was a really great place to start with an opener. And I'm going to be bringing my co-host, Ashley. I know you guys know her. She filmed with me on set for the motionless in white uh, music video werewolf. We filmed that together last September of 2022. And it was just like an instant bond and instant connection. And once we really started getting to know each other over the past year, we were like, wow, we have a lot in common. We grew up with a lot of similarities We're both in the goth lifestyle, goth genre of understanding that you're an outcast and you're not accepted, not only by your family, but by friends and by society, especially. And she was really like, you, this lifestyle podcast is amazing. Like you have to do this. Like this is, people are going to want to hear this. They want to hear our stories. So here we are today. And I can't wait to start this journey. This is technically going to be episode two uh, my first episode, I did a Creeps and Cosmetics on my Jean Benet Ramsey documentary. If you haven't seen that, please check it out. We will soon be available on all streaming platforms. Currently, we're only on Spotify and Apple with this podcast, so you can literally find it anywhere if you just search Tales from a Goth Girl with Crystal Leandra. Um, but I will soon have it everywhere you can imagine, which includes like iHeartRadio. You know, you know the drill. Um, but I was really excited to start it. So I'm going to bring in my co-host now. This is Ashley. Hello, my Hi. Ashley. Yay. It's so, I'm, you get to be here first. Isn't that cool? Yes, it is so exciting. I'm so happy to be here. This yes, is awesome. I can't wait. We're going to have such a fun time today. And, I, you know, Ashley's younger than me. I really look at her like a little sister. And it's we. It's so weird, too. Like, she's a Cancer Rising and a Taurus Sun. Like, we're so similar. I'm the same. Like, it's creepy. It's it's traumatic and creepy all at the same time. But we both grew up like, you know, obviously she's younger than me, but we have similarities, too, with the goth lifestyle. And and both of us are in genres that are are rare. So Ashley considers you. What do you consider yourself? I tend to what most people consider, like, present as a cyber goth. Because I wear a lot of neon colors. I listen mainly to like industrial or metal music. I don't, I don't very much listen to much the softer goth side, Mm -hmm. but I still love it. It's still close to my heart. Yeah. And then I'm uh, goth glam, which is really newer. I'm, I'm going to be real. I've always been goth glam, but a, a term for it really didn't uh, arise until a couple of years ago. And 
when I, it was actually, I was like scrolling through Pinterest like two or three years ago and I saw my, my fashion sense was now a genre. And I was like, oh my God, I finally figured out who I am, which, you know, not all goths like to be titled either. Like, you know, it's all under the alt umbrella. So some people like, I feel like the most common is like what vampire goth. When you agree with that? Vampire or Victorian. Like yes. Mm -hmm. But then there's also like trad goth mm -hmm. is the main one that you'll think like the dramatic, just like all black chunky eyeliner, mm -hmm. the huge like punk rock style hairs. Mm -hmm. um, like new new goths kinda. are really big too. Um, new age goths are mm -hmm. mall goth mixed with like witchy goth. That was really popular exactly. while we were on set too with Motionless and White. I think the majority though was hands down like vampire romantic goth for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. Even in More my like friend's circle, trendy. that, yes. Yeah, think of, like, Bram Stoker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bram Stoker, or the corsets, which I love corsets, too, but, and that can cross over to other genres, but um, I think that when most people hear the term goth, the first thought they have is, you're right, trad goth, which is, like, 70s, 80s, punk rock goth. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to go over, like, the history. Like, this is going to be good. This is going to be real. Aren't you excited? Like, I can't wait. I'm excited because um, when I'm at work, I I work in a very kind of like corporate setting and I've slowly weaseled m more of my aesthetic into my everyday appearance there to kind of like ease it up into them. Mm -hmm. And all the time they ask me like what it means. So a lot of people in the general community don't understand, but they, they're so willing to learn. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to present them with like a nice concise, hey. There's also misconceptions. There's also yeah. a massive amount of gatekeeping that goes in goth, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And we're I we're both like both of us are like chomping at the bit to break through the ceiling with that because, in my opinion, like if you consider yourself goth, just be goth. Like don't you don't need approval from other goths. But there are a lot of people in the genre that that gatekeep the shit out of it. Let's be honest, and it almost makes you afraid to say I'm goth. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, I wouldn't actually, I, I I don't wear makeup all the time. This is before I started getting extensions in my hair and people were like, you can't be goth because you don't have black hair. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've, heard, I oh, like, I've heard, I've heard, I'm blonde. I'm like white platinum blonde, but I, I still get people on my TikTok page that are like, you're considering yourself goth. You don't have black hair. And it's like, wait, wait, there's pastel goth that wear pastel hair colors. Cyber goth definitely does not have just black hair. Like cyber goths are known for having like, I, when I think cyber goth, the first image is like neon orange or like neon green. Yeah. I mean, li and that's what you're wearing it's right now. Like, your face color. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I, we'll get to that, though. Like, I want to break this down yeah. from the very beginning because, you know, I guess I want to start. Let's just start with talking briefly about gatekeeping. Okay. And I think the, the majority, in my opinion of what I have experienced with gatekeeping is really coming from, and I'm going to say it, I hate to say it, but Generation X. The Gen Xers, which are the people that did grow up in the 70s and 80s era, which are the like OG goths of that time, the trad goths. So I do, I respect will go out to them, obviously, but I often will get Gen Xers on my page that will tell me, oh, sure, goths sure change nowadays. Like there's all these new genres and oh, the music's not the same as what it used to be. Like just because it's not, you know, the post-punk wave era, Mm -hmm. And or like, oh, you know, uh, I know you've heard this. The infamous, if you're goth, you can't listen to any other genre of music. Have you heard that one? Oh, yes. Yes. I'm not going to like, I love the original goth music from the 80s, but like sound quality has gotten better. Yes. Audio compression has gotten better. I'm mm -hmm. going to listen to other things. <laughs> And I love, I love industrial music. I love the subculture. I, I'm, I'm for all of them. Like, you know, like yeah. I'm not going to say, I, you know, I love Nine Inch Nails. I love The Cure. I love The Banshees. I love all of Sisters of Mercy. Like, I love all those bands, but I also mm -hmm. love metal. And I, and I, you know what? I grew up in Colorado, so I even like some country songs because I did grow up there. You know what I mean? Like, I also like ska and reggae. I, same. You can't. <laughs> you can't like music when it makes you feel like something inside 
It's magical and you can't deny it. Just because I want to, I appreciate the aesthetic of one area does not mean that my entire personality has to be that one little box. And that's so boring. If you only listen to one genre, if you're only listening to goth, like, oh my God, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> like, geez, like you have no multifaceted personality. Like you, you should be listening to classical music. Like you're not, so apparently you're not allowed to listen to Mozart. Like it sounds crazy, but in the genre of goth, a lot of people, and once again, I hate to say it, but it's Gen Xers will say you're not goth if you listen to music outside of the goth genre. And okay, subculture. So like, I can understand it. I understand where they're coming from because they want to keep it that goth is based off of the music that you listen to. Because if you want to be goth, you need to at least understand and appreciate goth music. Yes. And so that's what defines it because it's technically, it shouldn't be about the way that you look and the way that you present yourself. It originally was just the music that you listen to. And thankfully it has expanded to where that we are able to express ourselves with what makes us feel as the person we are inside. Evolution, baby. I exactly. mean, not only with the genre, like, and, and a lot of, like, you know, the 80s goths will be like, trad goths, the only goths that exist. And I'm like, but but like the 90s happened and then cyber goths, well, I mean, and cyber came out mm -hmm. before the 90s, I know, but like, and there's goth glam, like, and mine's definitely not accepted in the community yet because it's no, so new. No, because it, it's so new and it's also so, girly yes while a lot of like the trad goth while the makeup takes amazing effort mm -hmm. it's very masculine gender neutral uh, yeah true or, true or or more towards the mask presenting with the very rugged cut black jawline yes and the jaw bones and everything so it's very like male presenting mm -hmm. and once you start going more into the expressing of your femininity that's when it's kind of like mm. they're like no you're not allowed to do that no yeah, yeah no you can't do that and i don't like that because i really consider myself like a dark divine feminine and i am comfortable in my feminine energy i have balanced both my masculine and feminine energies now but I definitely have decided to just, you know, society makes it hard on women anyways. I lived in my masculine energy for a long time and I refuse to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And goth glam is for me exactly how I can present myself. Very dark makeup, very dramatic makeup. I feel like the goth genre is always about the makeup. And mm -hmm. with goth glam, it's the tool and the lace and the frilly stuff and the ruffles. And it, it, you're right. It's like, oh, wait, there, here comes goth glam. It's about the corsets and, you know, the harnesses and the lace and the tool and the frilly stuff. And it's like, oh, no, no, that's that goes against what we built like trad goth on. And it's like, yeah, but it's evolution like this. Of course, it's yeah. not going to stay the same because it's as sad. a goth, you're already like against society's norms. Mm hmm. But now you're like, OK, I'm goth. Yep. I know about the genre. I understand the history. And I'm yep. I'm I'm claiming like, you know, this is what I am, like just goth or alt or whatever. But but I'm goth glam. And, but now you're in the goth genre and you're also not accepted. And it's like, but isn't that what we should be standing against? Because as people of the alt community, we understand what it's like to be bullied and we shouldn't be exactly. doing it to each other within the genre. No, I because where where I grew up. We have like a small group of people that were in the alternative community. And while I was too spooky for the normal people, mm -hmm. even I was not alternative enough for the the goth people mm -hmm. because I had hand me down clothes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do I couldn't do my makeup and mm -hmm. I had family that was like, no, you can't wear black all the time. Oh, my mom. Even though yep. mm -hmm. I was still reading, I have an entire collection of Anne Rice novels. Mm -hmm. I've read all the Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King and stuff. So it's like inside, I am a spooky babe. Yeah, let's talk about that first. Cause I think that's an, I mean, we, we want to get to the history and stuff. Like we have some facts people, okay? We have a factual list ready to talk about, but tell, prepared. I'm prepared. But I want to, I want to hear your story on, you know, like were you go like most people go from like you know alt to emo to goth or alt to goth where did you start and where did you end and why were you inspired by the culture were you inspired by a movie like what 
What spoke to your heart and soul that said Ashley is a cyber goth? Um, well, I initially wanted to be a cheerleader and a hip hop dancer when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my older brother, who I absolutely adored at the time, he was very much an alternative gentleman and he's like six foot jet, jet black hair, like only watched horror. And I was like, I want to be my brother. Mm -hmm. And he was the first person to show me Queen of the Damned mm -hmm. and the scene where the goths are just flooding Death Valley. I was like, that's my people. Like, <laughs> I want to be those people. And then to include a redhead who also like when she shows up in that um, plaid dress seeing Lestat, I was just like, I want to be Jesse. Now that's that, interesting that you're because you're Irish, you're very redheaded, right? And so like, what's, do you have, I mean, because I'm indigenous, right? I'm, I'm like half indigenous. My grandmother's off the res. I'm literally registered with my tribe. I have a tribal number. Um, like, like I'm legit. Like I'm, I'm not just a little bit, like I'm a lot of it. Yeah. But like my yeah. indigenous heritage struggles with allowing me to be, be goth because in that, you know, we're very spiritual. And of course I have adopted my spiritualism from my grandmother. She's off the res. Uh, shamanism like it's it's hardcore stuff and if I have those same beliefs and but you know the indigenous side doesn't want to accept me because um, you know when you wear all black and you like vampires you're definitely summoning demons and you're worshiping Satan so how do you have that problem with your I Irish side at all not really because I my spirituality what I would umbrella it is more of like a Celtic paganism, mm -hmm. which is more of like eclectic and all inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, so with my spirituality, yes, more um, traditional style religions. When I come in contact with those people, my grandmother did not like this. She was very Roman Catholic. She oh, was like, yeah, mm, Jesus, Lord. You make my life miserable. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Did she really say that? Oh, I believe yes. it. But now she hangs around and every time I'm like having a bad day, Abba will come on and I'll be like, thanks, Grandma. Aw, yeah. yeah. Well, in, in other words, they just accept you for who you are and it is what it is. Eventually, because she, I think, <clears throat> wanted me to be happy for who I am. And as goth and as a person who dresses in black, people assume that all of us are super sad and we want to kill ourselves. <laughs> Honestly, Jesus. if you listen to some older goth music, it makes sense. Like, <laughs> Just the way you said that. Death, like, right. I, <laughs> but uh, you can be a happy person and happy, bright. And most people who have like are living their true lives and presenting how they want to present tend to be the more happy people. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, you're living authentically. Why, like, why am I, I'm not miserable. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Exactly. And when people see that and you're not in their little box that they think that society needs you to live in to be happy, they're like, you're not in that box and you're really happy. Why am I so salty? Mood. They Every day. kind <laughs> of lash out. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, it's because you're living for other people's requirements, whether it's your parents mm -hmm. told you to go to be a doctor and you did and it wasn't what you wanted to do. Like, you're right. Like, you've got to follow your own heart. And even if that means your style and your genre, whatever it is, like, it doesn't have to be goth, you know, like, you just got to live, that. you got to live your own life authentically. And you're right. I think uh, people that aren't are the miserable ones for sure. So my brother showed me Queen of the Damned and I fell in love with that. And as I started to delve more into like the media that had the darker aesthetic, um, I found Triple uh, X mm -hmm. and Rammstein. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. When I really fell into like my obsession with the Germany, um, that's when I found Cyber Goth, and I was like. Oh my gosh, I can still love neon and wear black clothes mm -hmm. and I and I can have tutus. Mm -hmm. Yes. You guys, when we were on set for Motionless in White, Ashley was by far the coolest bitch on set. Like, and it's, I mean, I know we've already talked, we talked about this once before. We did a podcast, but we should talk br briefly about it again because like, so we're, we're yeah, all, there's it was like. the best day of my life. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I mean, honestly, I had I've done a lot of film sets in my day, and that was that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I'm, I have no complaints, not a single one. It was a well-oiled machine. It, <laughs> Ashley, I'm dead. Uh, so we're you know we they have us like you know huddled out in this tent outside, and then they uh, they handpicked you know a certain a small amount of us for this like special group to go film extra scenes, which Ashley and I were both chosen for. And we're in this, and they're just like, you know, it's the typical film set. They're pushing you back and forth in different directions, you know? And, like, after, like, it's fun for, like, the first 20 minutes. And then you're like, oh, now I have to walk back. and Oh, you know, like, back and forth. So uh, it was like, we'd been in there for, like, a half an hour. And Ashley, I had seen you, right? And I was like, yeah. dude, this girl is so cool. She was in front of me. And, but I was kind of in the back because I was doing makeup runs for helping on set. And... Um, Ashley turns around, looks at me, and she was like, I did my makeup inspired by you. And I was like, who are you? Like, do I, like, do I know you? I had, and, I had secretly been stalking you on TikTok. You were like, I was hoping that you'd be here. And I was like, what's going on? Because I, like, I, once again, I was looking at Ashley like, this girl is so cool. Like, I want to be her friend. And then she just, like, you had, like, fearless, just, like, I'll tell you everything. I was like, Jesus, Lord. And I was like, it took me a minute because, once again, I was running around doing makeup. And so my brain was, like, so I didn't say anything. I was like, oh. I think at first I was like, oh. I was, like, just caught off guard. She's like, I'm wearing rhinestones. You taught me how to wear rhinestones. And I was like, I think that this means she follows me on social. I was like, I'm not sure. So, like, I think 10 minutes went by, and I was like, hey. So, so do you follow me on TikTok? Like, I got so confused. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm like, ah, all right, it makes sense. And it was like I love instant. How you said that I was so confident. <laughs> I was like, I don't want her to yell at me because you have, you have, you have a presence about you. Oh God! I don't give away my secrets, God, Ashley. Jesus. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's good. you're strong and you present as if you're strong. If that were the case, then why there. did me running away from Chris Motionless not work and he chased me down? It's really rude, okay? Um, he chased you down. It worked. It did exactly what you wanted. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Don't tell me you didn't have that. Uh, I, no, I really didn't. I really didn't. <laughs> I really did not plan that. I was... I was Wait, I was, listen, I was the furthest away from everybody. You know it. I was in the back Look, corner. Just right there. And then they're like, nah, we want you back here. That's because I had to go get makeup again. I ran out twice. I had to go get a powder. I got a Fenty powder. And then I had to go out again and get a black lip. And that, and I was like, good, dude. Like, I don't want to be up front with him. I told you that. And then all of a sudden, he jumps off the stage. Oh, God. I thinking about it i want to scream now that we're actually just okay so i think this is why like you were you were okay you're like you don't have to look at me because you know i'm gonna see you one one more day like we're gonna have a professional relationship you don't need to see me all sweaty like this yes and i'm here like this is the only shot i get <laughs> Um, so whatever happens, happens. So that's where I was able to be so... You were right up front. You were in his face. I was just like, yeah, you were. Is, I'm here today. Yeah, you I'm were. I'm going to be seen today. <laughs> and I was hiding in the back. And instead, he... It, if if I'm if I have a presence, then why did he not leave me alone? <laughs> Jesus. That's exactly why he didn't leave you alone. Because you have, like... It's, it's, it's an attract... Like, it's like a heat-seeking missile. Okay, the sound... <laughs> It sounds weird. I'm sorry. I'm trying it's to fine. explain this. It's all right. But you, okay, so you're just like, attention is drawn to you. So you have a pulling effect to you. I'm uh -huh. not saying it's in a negative manner, but it does. And so because you people are just like that. Drawn right there, to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why he didn't leave you alone because he needed to know. He needed to show you that he appreciated your presence. Huh. I don't know what that was. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I, I was... think it's really cool. I think it's not embarrassing. No, I mean, no, I I'm really. Ha cool. I'm not. Yeah, no, I don't want. If if he ever listens to this, for God's sake, I don't want him to think I mm. uh, I wasn't grateful or by all means. I just was sweaty as hell, and I didn't want to see yeah. him. And exactly. and then he but decided he didn't care. He doesn't care. Uh, clearly, 
clearly 100 yeah. percent. yeah it's fine it's great you know what i mean it's fine it's fine it's fine i'm traumatized and it's fine i just remember okay. looking at you across the room and you saw he ran over and your mouth was open because you were just like oh. because i'm like this bitch this bitch running away from him on his own set how why why you do that i did i ran away from chris motionless i was like bye see you later i i mean i literally asked ashley i ran from him i like i was like oh no no i was so sweaty i was so sweaty and i was like no 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 i was like fear i was like no no i got i was like please don't i just kept moving further away from him he was like and people were stopping would, him. Yeah, and then he would like stop and he's like, it's okay. Like, yeah, and I'm people were like, hey, Chris Motion lives. Like, and he's like, hey, nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. And he's just like shoving people out of the way to get to me. And I was like, ah, please stop. <laughs> I was like, stop running. You were like, you said I had fear in my face. I felt like I just had like absolute ghost, like sheer white fear. Like, you won't leave me alone. I'm scared. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyone else would have handled that much differently, but hey, you know what I'm saying? At least he'll never forget me after that. It's great. Exactly. Yeah, he'll exactly. never forget me. It's fine. Um, anyway, now that my trauma's done, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about, um, so my experience with goth is yeah. interesting. So I actually, uh, let's, I'm trying to think of an age. I think it was about sixth grade that... Um, I fell in love with Gwen Stefani, but not when she was Gwen Stefani, when she was with the band, no doubt. But it, I was obsessed with her image of just like the black. And I still wear if, if you guys ever see me wear black and white checkers, it's because of her. Like she, that was like her era of what what album was that? Rock Steady, Rock Steady era, which was like red, black and white was like. Ugh. So literally in high school, I would sew my own clothes to like mimic her. And like, I know we didn't have a lot. I didn't grow up rich. I did not grow up rich. So, and my mom was a seamstress. So she would take me to um, the local fabric stores and I, I couldn't buy just any fabric. I had to pick from the like, you know, clearance section or what we don't close out section. And my mom would help me do patterns and teach me how to sew. And I would make outfits mimicked on Gwen Stefani. I mean, talk about obsessed, like my whole basement, like I had a basement apartment in our house and it was just no doubt, no doubt. I was just, I had pink hair, like, so that was really my era. And then I got really first introduced to like, not necessarily, I definitely got introduced to the goth music last, which is okay. I, I need people to know that that's okay. It doesn't have to be the other way around. I was fascinated with the fashion. And you're right, like you said, watching, you know, Queen of the Damned, it's like, oh my God, I want to be part of that. Like, you know, you're right. People think you're you're worshiping the devil and saying, come on, because I wear black clothes, like, please, you know. Um, but I saw the movie Powder, and I just told you about this the other day. You haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> you'll I'm have surprised I have it. I was like, this movie looks amazing. You'll have to watch it. It came out, I think, when I was in like fourth grade. So and I was weird. I was a weird kid. I was always into really dark, deep um understanding film my mom was like oh my god this kid's weird like why would a you know a, a grade school kid want to watch this like deep sad depressive goth kid on t and i was obsessed with the movie powder and it's basically about this kid who interacts with the other side and he's extremely pale he's albino he has purple eyes wears glasses all the time wears all black very like all goth and he has like these special powers he's connected to the other side but what i connected with with that movie was how bullied he was. And I was extremely bullied a lot, most of my life, really like starting seventh grade. And um, I always felt like I didn't belong, but it's, you're, it's weird you're talking about like my energy because I've always been like, people either love me or hate me. There's no in between. There's no in between. Yeah. I hate that. And I think it's my, you're, you have what a uh, Capricorn moon, I have an Aquarius moon which is ruled by Saturn, which is karma. So I think that that often mirrors people's worst back to them. Mm -hmm. So they either take it as like a lesson or they take it as fearful. And if they're afraid or they don't like, they call me aggressive or, oh, she's mean or she's scary or I just don't like her. So I'll bully her and scare her. So I just, I had that my whole life. Like, and it was weird because as a kid, I was very quiet. Like my cancer rising was out as a child. Like cancer risings are known for being like 
moody or affected. Like, I was silent. Like, I just didn't talk to people. I was just quiet. Um, but then I started getting bullied in seventh grade. It got worse. And I had, a, I had a friend commit suicide in seventh grade, which just totally put the trajectory. That's a very young age to deal with that kind of death. Yeah. And it sent me into a trajectory of like the absolute goth alt lifestyle because I was, I should have probably been in counseling, honestly, but I don't think anybody knew what to do with that. You're 13 years old dealing with a death, you know? I've been in counseling since I was five. <laughs> Actually, yeah, so the alt lifestyle started. I there was I didn't go to a huge high school. Like there was 400 kids at my high school. Our graduating class was like 120. There was, was 200. Yeah, little. There was one goth girl at my school and um she was <laughs> she was extremely like antisocial. So and I think, you know, I was not I was in goth at that time. I wasn't goth. It wasn't really till I got into my 20s. And, and really, how I came up with the goth glam genre was I sort of took the alt lifestyle of Gwen Stefani, mixed it with dark clothes, and then added in like inspiration from like Mean Girls aesthetic or Clueless, the movie Clueless aesthetic. And so I was already doing goth glam, it just didn't have a name. But I didn't wear all all black because my mom, my mom was like, you have to wear like some other colors sometimes like you can't wear all black, you know, but um, mm -hmm. eventually like my whole closet just became black. It's like it just is what it is. I it's interesting, though, because and I'm really happy that we're talking about this because I've been doing Ghost Girl Diaries, you know, for years, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I never really identified as goth like the whole time. And. I, I did within my friend group, like my, my personal yeah. life knew, like people in my personal life knew I was goth, but I never publicly came out as goth. And it was because I was afraid of being gatekept, especially after as many views I got with Ghost Girl Diaries. Like I literally have a YouTube channel with millions of views. And I was like, yeah. the last thing I need is for people to come at me saying you're not goth enough or you don't listen to the music or whatever. And what ended up, you know, or only that music. And my mom, when she died, um, you know, a, such a traumatic death, she was murdered in January of 2022. I was like, dude, I'm just going to be myself. And it wasn't because she died. It was because I realized how short life was. And I just really didn't give an F what other people thought at that point. Like, and so I made it my mission for the whole year of 2022 when I started doing social media was I'm just going to be myself. It's just time to be myself. Yep. I can't hide it anymore. I'm goth and... You're either going to accept it or you're not as, as a, you know, as my fans from Ghost Girl Diaries. And I was like, I just don't care. And it was crazy because when I came out like that and I started doing goth makeup, I'm like, dude, this is just me. Like, I'm sorry I haven't been myself till now. All of a sudden, here comes Chris Motionless liking, commenting on all my videos. And then he casts me for a gothic music video. Dude, honestly, I had the exact same 2022, but not with my mom. I had been in a 12 year long um, toxic and unhealthy relationship. Oh, Jesus. I, start, I met them when I was 14 years old mm -hmm. and it took until January of 2022. And through that time, I had to suppress who I was because mm -hmm. my I was shown too bright for them. Uh, so I- it's Like so a death of your old just, self. Yes, and once <clears throat> I left him, I bought my own house and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's when I started wearing my extensions and I started wearing my heavier makeup consistently because anytime I would wear it before, he'd be like, what are you doing? Who are you dressing up for? So I never really got the option to do that. And within 2022, I was able to actually start living in the form of the person my 13 year old self wanted me to be. And then I also started getting attention from Chris and he put that, I started going to like, I went to almost 20 concerts last year, which was something I was never allowed to do, which revived my inner child, it, my inner child and my adoration for music mm -hmm. and the way that it can have such a spiritual connection with people. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's really helped drive me to fully express myself the way that I want to be inside because it just like, lit a fire within me and then I met you which helped me like progress further and you're like no this is the personality you need to keep mm -hmm. and it's been amazing 
That's a really empowering story for anyone that's listening because it's like, I mean, we have two separate journeys. Obviously, mine was traumatic. No, yours is all traumatic. But you, in other words, it's never too late to be yourself. Exactly. You can do it whenever you want. And, and as soon as you, and we're both living proof right now living proof of the paranormal. That's my original group. Sorry. Oh, if you know, you know, okay. If you know, you know, yes. I was on YouTube with that. Okay, sorry. Um, living proof that if you live your authentic life, that is when the opportunities come in. It just, just within that short amount of time, how dramatically my life has changed. It had, it's, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I can't speak on your experience because, and even in there with all of that, we both had experienced our downtime. Like you also have, it's like waves of mourning. Oh yeah. Old, oh, it's old still, it, it's just going to be losses. going for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. <laughs> it's never, it's never going to go away. Uh -uh, uh -uh. And it's like, it's hard because throughout the time that I wasn't expressing myself it's like I it's kind of like when you start doing that it's funny because anytime you talk about when you met me you say I was fearless the entire time I I was trying not to show that I was about to cry <laughs> because I was so scared and I'm like oh. my little self I do not deserve to be here yeah. I am just no and then to hear you call me like beautiful and attract and like in that like so that's also another thing like do it scared yes do it scared but also surround yourself with people that bring you up and not bring you down because I was even thinking back to the of like um you know when I was putting notes together for the stream last night and uh you know thinking about when we first met and and on set and stuff and like Ashley and I like literally you're talking about two strangers. She's like literally from Wisconsin, flew into LA. I drove from Vegas to LA in a night for, I was being crazy. Like I have no clue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like last minute call. Hey, we want you on set. Oh my God. Of course. Like I never thought I'd be in a music video. I'll be right there. You know, like, <laughs> geez. But, um, you know, when we were there together, I don't know. It's past life for sure. Ashley and I, like oh, yeah. it's because it was like instant connection, and, and he, we were on set with, like, probably 50 people or so, probably maybe 30 to 50. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just wanting to be around Ashley and I because we were, like, guys, like, we were pumping everybody up. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, do this. A lot of, like, scared emo kids, a lot of scared um, alt kids that were just cast to be goth. And they're, like, oh, my God, do I look goth enough? Like, I don't know if I – and we're, like, no, you look great. You look good. Like, and so we were really pumping up that positive energy and, and – Pretty soon I'm looking around and Ashley and I like are just surrounded by everybody. And I was like, this girl and I, I, it, I don't even know her. And look at what we're bringing our energy together. Look what we brought in. You know what I mean? Like, and I was like, wow, like this is really cool when you meet a stranger like that. But once again, you're pumping each other up. You're encouraging each yeah. other. And it's about like really surrounding yourself with healthy people and not toxic people. And it is, you know, just be happy for someone when they're happy. Mm -hmm. And it's just to promote that good energy is what is, I think is what made that so good is because people could see that it was just, no, no, everything is great. You look amazing. Everything is great. <laughs> it was great though. I mean, it was, we didn't have any problems. We had so much fun and Ashley, I was like, I didn't, I did not suspect you had any fear, fearful bone in your body. I did not suspect that at all. And I, I mean, I'm such, I, I'm going to be real. Like I am a pro with film. Like I've been doing it for so many years. Like, so this was like, like, yeah, it was new because it was a, a music video set, but I knew what to expect. You know, I had been there. And um, so I didn't, and I was also like, Ooh, don't come across cocky either. You know, you got to have a balance. You know what I mean? And um, but yeah, we, it was, it was a lot of fun. We had, it was a blast. It was, uh, I'm really happy that, um, we met and yeah. got to experience that together because that's something we get to take. We got to be in a freaking music video, bro. Yeah. No, I will. If you've ever seen, um, uh, I felt like Elle Woods from Legally Blonde. I was, she was in a Ricky Martin music video. 
No, See, she was an emotionally. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, I think it's Big Bang Theory when um, Hel- Wallowitz comes back from being an astronaut and he's like, I'm an astronaut. And his <laughs> wife is like, nobody cares for an astronaut. Yes. And I was like, so what? I was in a, I was in a music video. And yeah. like, <laughs> Does anybody care? I was in a music video. <laughs> you don't care? I-, I. It was good. I mean, and then it was filmed and I was like, yes. Amen. Yeah. So good. I'm just saying, Chris, if you ever need anybody again, uh, you know who to call right here. Uh, anyway, just you know, shameless plug right here. Uh, one yeah, of us will just get this. in touch with the other one. You know what I'm saying? People are watching like, wow, they are great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's the story of how we became goth. It was all about the trauma. It's the trauma. Everything comes back down yeah. to the trauma. Yeah, yeah. And maybe some books and wanting to be a vampire. For sure. 100 percent right. i yeah if there are any vampires out there i will also i am also accepting invitation i'm i'm really digging werewolves if you know what i'm saying but like um, open to vampires I'm, I'm, too you know what i'm saying it's fine i uh, bringing it bringing it to to some vampire stories <laughs> i will appreciate a hybrid we are so obnoxious i hope everybody loves this because we're being very much ourselves this is how we were on set i think that's why everybody loved us we were making everybody laugh we're like Lighten up, dude. You're on a music video <laughs> set. You know what I mean? Like, drink We're some water, fun. you dehydrated bitch. Like, Jesus, you, you know? God. It's true. We were on set. <laughs> Ashley looked so good, guys. Oh, my God. She had, like, this spiked bra on. And, like, she's built, like, a ton of bricks because, you know, she does dance. <gasps> you are. You're just built. I'm like, damn, that bitch has a body. God. And she had this, like, short skirt on. She had night or, uh, st- uh, what is it called? fishnets and then she had these yeah she had these huge demonias and i was like damn this bitch man like shit but then everyone is calling me goth um prom queen i was like you know what we can do this together oh yeah we've got this you need you need your bulky backup i had the biggest crown in there that's all i needed you know what i'm saying we're good to go I did. I ha- did. I have my spike crown on or the red and black crown. It was you the black. Yeah. It was, it was the Sabrina crown. Yeah. Ah, the Sabrina crown from the Gates of Hell. Yes, that's exactly who I am. Ah, the Queen of Hell. Yes, that's me. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, the Queen of Paranormal. The Queen of the Underworld. Very- yeah, mm. it's true. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just- looking for Hades. I don't know where he's at. Um, he's in the other room. <laughs> oh, is your cat named Hades? Yeah. How creepy! It's a black little fluff ball. How cute! I didn't know that. That's so good. Oh I'm God. looking for a redhead cat, and I want to name her Persephone. Yes, do it. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God! I'm looking for a werewolf once again, just to reiterate. Um, and um, we know who that is. Like, yeah, the one that there was a particular like- one that chased me down. I'm just saying. So I'm um, just putting it out there. All right, carrying on. Um, <laughs> she's. Uh, hey, no shame. I don't have any shame. I'm just a wing woman. That's like, yeah. I know my position. In Look. <laughs> Actually, Jesus. <laughs> we need to go to a goth club together. I think we'd have a freaking blast. I will not. Li- I have never been to one. There is one, <clears throat> um, like, um, gay bar in town mm-hmm. and they have one goth night mm-hmm. and it's on Sunday nights and I work at six o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. I unfortunately have never gone to an actual goth night. There is um artifices here in town. You'll have to come when we when you come out to Vegas. It's <clears throat> it's really cool that it's little but it's it's adorable. I mean it's adorable. You walk in and they have like these bar seats all all the way around. Like it, it's very vibing like goth vibes which makes you feel like ah, ah I'm at home. Like ah my people you know <laughs> Um, bartenders don't really dress up, but I mean, geez, they're on their feet. So like, you know, yeah, but they have like a really huge, like dark dance floor and, um, they always blast orgy, the, the band really, it's like really heavy metal, like goth music. And they always blast that before they get the night going. So it just makes you want to be like, yeah, like, yeah, (laughs) you know what I mean? So yeah, we'll have to go to Artemis. It's small though. There's some really cool ones in LA and there's some really good ones in New York, but I also need to go to a German rave. Um, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, Ashley keeps I wanting me be. to go to a rave, guys. And I'm like, I'm too old. I'm tired, bro. I'm going to end up being a rave mom. If someone slips me something, I'm not going to have a fun time. You know what I mean? Like, 
I'm gonna be a party you don't pooper. Drink the water. You, uh, you drink your can. I don't. I don't do the weird. I just no. The day. Yeah, I don't know. There's no drugs here. Okay, don't touch my water no. bottle, Mofo. You can have it now. Okay, you're gonna poison me. Absolutely not. I don't I just, trust you. Like just like on set when I saw you, I swear to God, guys, out of everybody on set, Ashley was the coolest looking one. She had like Beetlejuice hair, like the colors, like purple, green, like white hair. This girl was like decked out, and I was like, she is the coolest hoe in this room. Yeah, and but then some of them had full PVC dresses, and I was like, I want that dress. And they were dehydrated and dying. But they were cute. But it was a hundred degrees in there, and thank God I had oh, I had fluffy tulle on. Okay. So when I was running, I was very airy, okay? I could air that out with my tool skirt, okay? <laughs> I had to, like, keep unzipping my boots, like, past my knees. Did you? I so didn't... I could sit down on the floor. Oh, my God. Because it was getting, like, the it was getting warm in those boots. Oh. So I'd just unzip it a little bit and sit down on the floor. It was great. It was funny because, like, I would start sitting down and people were like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> We can sit on the floor. Yeah, you started the trend of everyone sitting. Literally, Ashley was like, Simon says sit, and everyone sits. You just even sit. I was like, I'm tired. They're they're taking time to switch people around. People needed makeup. Oh, people God. People didn't know how to sit. There was the one tap. girl on so set was, that she had, oh. Who, there was time, time. She had, like, a full-on, win- like, black furry winter coat. Do you remember her? She, yes. And she yes. didn't have anything like, under it. Amazing. She's like, I said, can't you take it off? She's like, no, I don't have anything under it. And I was like, oh, my God, you're going to die. And she was pouring sweat. I was like, holy shit, Jesus. You know, some people, you you (sighs) live and you learn. You You almost didn't live. Let's talk about goth history because it's not like, okay, and I'm going to piss some people off. But, you know, what? that's fun. Like, let's just go for it. You know what I mean? Like, people think goth was invented in the 70s. Like, there, I really think that the gatekeepers of goth think that it was invented in the 70s. And guess what? It wasn't. It was invented way before then in Germany. And not even that. You could probably even trace it a little bit Nordic, don't you think? Like, a little Nordic? Yeah. For sure. Like, if you look at the Nordic Vikings, like, that, you know what I mean? I, they, they, they're, I feel like they delved into the barbarians. But I feel like it could cross over easily. Oh, yeah. Because every time I go to, like, the Renaissance Fair and the Barbarians are there, they all want me to join them. I'm like, yes, yes. On my Instagram, I have a really cute goth Viking look. I'm just saying. I think, I, I'm, this is a random side note, but I think that for, this is just a prediction. This is a fashion prediction okay. for all goths listening. I think that 2023 is going to be the year of goth Mad Max fashion. I freaking love that idea yeah. okay I, this is really cool and i'm looking at the notes the origin word of goth is connected to the roman empire which is what we just said but it literally has nothing to do with the subculture and i don't think people realize that no but everybody does think about gothic architecture though. yes yes i agree um because everybody every goth i'm, I'm sorry if i'm speaking for you loves a good gothic cathedral i wish i could live like, there honestly every mm-hmm. day you're right when you're goth you love that aesthetic oh the archways are so pretty oh. so it's like we we love things yeah, we love things <laughs> you said that um but goths were actually originated as a germanic tribe um, that helped defeat the Roman Empire. So once again, that definitely wasn't in the 1970s. That wasn't in the 1970s. And like the concept even like delved into earlier cinema with like horror and mm-hmm. like the dark romantic and vampires. Rom and Stoker. Stuff like that. And va- yeah. the tales of vampires have been around a lot longer so mm-hmm. than the 70s and the 80s. I agree. And they like they can Well, 18th the century. Back. I mean, literally 18th yeah. century. Yeah. But the, yeah, it's true. But that's what drives me so crazy about like this whole, you know, the Gen Xers that come after me online. And I, you know, I'm not, look, I don't have hate against y'all. I don't have anything against trad goths. They are the ones, though, I, that are so cutthroat with me. And it drives me crazy. It's just like, come on, guys. Like, let's just all accept, like, if you're goth, you're goth. Like, let's not, you know, who cares? Just be be yourself, period. Just be there yourself. There are a lot, um, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who are, gatekeepy i don't want to try to say that like all gen xers are no they're not because um 
but that specific like genre section tend to be the meanest of you yes. can sit with us type a- a- oh that is the perfect way to put it amen they are the mean girls of the- yeah not everyone yeah. not everyone but yeah no. and it sucks because i i do i get haters on on my tiktok page and on my youtube page for what everything we've said and it's just like come on come on mm-hmm. i'll post like a gothic makeup tutorial using a metal band so 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 what I literally like who cares and then they're like oh my god you can't listen to metal if you're goth you're not actually goth like oh my god it'd be so boring if I just play Sisters of Mercy over and over again you know what I mean like come on I got so much um hate for being a him fan like I have a I have a him vinyl in the background I have him tattooed on my body mm-hmm. I would I, like they I would consider were my him band of my formative years yeah and people are like you just like him because of Bam Margera and I was like who the heck is that <laughs> and I didn't know about him but that Aww, was like my Bam. gothic romance obsession yeah yeah and so and they're like no you can't because him isn't really like a goth band mm. they i got are, that for like, pop i, I posted metal. a papa roach song and w- with a tutorial and i got hate for that really bad and i was like okay yeah. my eyes just rolled so hard i saw my brain i'm like have you seen jacoby like come on now it's not even I'll that it's just that. just who, why can't just who can come on god no, it's like they're aesthetic so it's just like because the sound and composition of the music is different doesn't mean it's not goth it just doesn't follow under the like the dark wave or synth wave yes um yes. umbrella they still have the goth concept within their music if they're in their lyricism if you can well look it's at the that, alt umbrella that. i feel like all of it falls yeah. under the alt um, like i in high school i was obsessed with no doubt i was obsessed with blink 182 i was like a punk kid like a punk punk rock punk pop kid and you're not going to tell me not to ever listen to my Blink-182 or my, you know, No Doubt Again. Like, no, it's not going to. That's where, that's where I, we all have to come from somewhere. Like, that's where we start. You know what I mean? But. Um, this album was an Eminem CD, okay? I mean, Eminem. Oh, my God. Jesus. Eminem and Chris Brown. Okay? He, let me CDs just say, there. as, you know, millennial, Eminem is beautiful. Jesus, Lord, he is beautiful. My mm-hmm. God. Those blue eyes, though. Uh, I mean, he became a handsome, uh, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. So I'm just saying. So you go for the you, you want the M M&M? and No, we're staying you with the, the werewolf. werewolf. M&M? I said the werewolf. I'm not straying for the werewolf. God, I got a werewolf to chase me. Okay, we're halfway there. Okay, <laughs> Jesus. Who knows who you are? I know. Step one. Yeah, we got we got one done. We're we're we're, we're quarter of the way there. We're almost there. Um. But, like, also going back to the, the goth genre is oftentimes, obviously, you're obsessed with, like, you know, Halloween, horror, oh. the darkness, like, the dark side, mm-hmm. the dark makeup. Um, really, for me, being a cosmetologist, that was another thing that I just loved, like, everything under the alt umbrella is just, like, how aesthetically cool it is. Like, even when I was a cosmetologist, I don't, I am licensed still as a cosmetologist. I just don't practice anymore. Um, because obviously social media and ghost girl diaries, but, um, when I specialized in hair, I talk about this in my book. If you don't have my book, why you should buy it. Um, when I specialized in hair, I actually worked for like rock and metal bands and I traveled with them and my specialization was mohawks. Um, I usually had, um, I usually worked with lead singers, drummers, and guitarists the most. Because they like the really whacked out crazy hair. Usually it was the drummer with the mohawk. And I would do like leopard print hair and rainbow hair and checkered board hair. Like that was my specialty. Um, that's awesome. So that's all under the alt umbrella. You know what I mean? And so I've always been in this scene. I can't believe I was in a music video after that. Like if I could go back to my 20 year old self and be like, oh, just wait. Like you have some good stuff. I'd be like, what? You know what I mean? Um, it makes me wish I would have kept rigging with my uncle. I've been backstage a lot, mm-hmm. and my uncle was a rigger with the local venues around here, and mm-hmm. he brought me backstage and taught me how to do some stuff. I wish I would have kept with Yeah, but it's a lot of work. I mean, I was back, I would be behind stage as their personal stylist, so if they'd run off stage and need to be powdered, or if they had, like, really dramatic makeup or whatever. But, I mean, when you're looking at people that are doing that stuff, like, oh, man. That's a lot of like I admire people like the stage crew and like their whoever's working with them. Oh my god, it's so much. It's heavy lifting. I did a WWE show. I I did rigging, not rigging, but I like did like 
light running. So like I would shift the boxes around to mm-hmm. move the cords. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was, I was like, ah, this is so much physical. Activity. It is. It, yeah. You have to admire people that really enjoy that side of it because it's, it's so, so much work. Um, so going back to the goth, you know, what you've created yourself, like horror literature, obviously is huge cinema, Dracula books, mm-hmm. Bram Stoker, anything to do with graveyards, ghosts, vampires, anything melodramatic, right? Which is really true for me too, because even as a kid, I was obsessed with Wednesday Adams. I was obsessed with Adam's family. Like my, my goal in a relationship is finding a Gomez. You know, like I want to be Morticia and like I want to be the feminine energy. I want that like lustful, obsessive, passionate energy, um, which we're never going to find. So it's fine. But, um, <laughs> you know, he exists somewhere out there. And we're live your delusional life. Yeah, okay. actually, yes, you should, because that's how you look at what ca- what we you and I both did. Like we mm-hmm. started living our authentic life and, and look at the universe was like, oh, good. You're finally back to yourself here. We're going to reward you now. You know what I mean? So, no, I agree. Be delusional. <laughs> Jeez, gosh. You're like, any time now. Let me know. It's fine. I'm waiting. I've been so. single for over a year. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's ugh, I shouldn't even say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Why am I saying this? Why do I feel like I should say this? You should. OK. Say Are it. you sure? Are you sure? Go for it. Okay, I've been celibate for six years. You know? Is that scary? Um. Yeah, it is. So let me tell you why. <laughs> I started doing yeah, shadow. I started doing shadow work like six years ago. Okay. And you know, shadow work is deep, and you're and you're especially in like divine feminine energy, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. um when you start healing and doing shadow work, you do not want, I'm not going to waste my time with F boys. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go give my energy to somebody that doesn't deserve it. First of all, I've never been a loose goose anyways, which doesn't matter if you are like, amen, go for it. But like, I, I just don't want to share my energy with somebody that's going to waste my time. That's the honest God truth. And if, if I'm not meeting someone who's spiritually leveled up, like, you know, either on their way or at my level, I'm not interested. Yeah. Yeah. This is a privilege to be in this energy, like quite literally in it, if you know what I'm saying. So like yeah. if if you're not at that level, you don't you're not deserving of my energy. So yeah, I've been celibate for six years. I've only been with one person and I would, so I don't know. Fully understand that. Yeah. Because I've had I had the same type of pathway. Mm-hmm. And then it was like it like it was once it was towards the end of that relationship when <clears throat> it was um forced non-celibacy mm-hmm. um and that that's when you start to like shut down not only because like you're just like no I can't share that energy with somebody it's also like the the trauma I don't want to share that <laughs> the trauma with somebody because it's scary that's but that's still healing and that's still being yeah. empowered in your own energy because you're saying I am a goddess and no one's deserving of this even you period yeah. sorry bye mm-hmm. And that's where I'm at. I don't, I don't, well, I've never been the kind of just, I, I'm not going to sleep with a stranger. Not going to happen. Absolutely you know, not. I, pre- I present like I am, I, I'm a very like sexually okay person. Like I understand and I can hold my energy, but I am not a sexual person. Does that make sense? My Aries is in, my, my Aries, am I okay? Did I just have a seizure? My Venus and my Lilith are in Aries and they're conjunct each other in my 10th house, which is your 10th house is your public figure, right? Yeah. I have a stellium in my 10th house of Aries and Lilith is one, is a very dark placement. It's a very sexualized yeah. placement, especially when it's conjunct Venus. I'll give you an example. Marilyn Monroe had that same placement. So men that meet me, even if I am dressed from head to toe, not showing any cleavage, nothing, they will automatically think that I will go to bed with them. And I have and, and I can be like a bitch. OK. Yeah. And they, I still get people still think that I'm I'm like easy. And I'm like, I hate that placement in myself. <laughs> like, go away, Lilith and Aries. Like, I don't like that people think that about me. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. I'm sexualized no matter what. Do you get do you get uh, messages from dudes on social media? Being goth, I, I you don't? don't. I am I'm being goth. No, like I'll get people like waving at me, but mm-hmm. a lot of the times um people are either 
I want to say scared of me. Like, yes, they, they will admit they're attracted to me, but they're also like scared of me or I present too much as like innocent. And then they're like, mm, I don't want to touch that. Maybe that's your Capricorn mood. Mm, yeah. I like, I, I don't, it's either that or I'm just like blind. To the <laughs> what? Jesus. Because I'm just like, I'm so used to being like the person that somebody like the guys felt like embarrassed to have a crush on like you do not like that person and they would get made fun of if it would ever get out that i liked them so i'm so used to people being like grossed out by me for a lack of better words that i don't see people um you're gorgeous you have to shadow work that shit you gotta shadow work yeah so it's i'm i'm blind to whenever somebody's like actually attracted to me well and the reason i was saying that is because i feel like in the goth community um goth girls are sexualized yes yeah and it makes me want to throw up to be honest with you and and there are some girls out there and I know you've probably seen them and you probably follow some that are that enjoy it they put themselves out there go do it free free will ho like you do your thing like you get it people are stupid Uh, but I don't like like I get negative attention like you know in a way that I consider negative like guys saying like oh can I be your sugar daddy can I pay you to talk like I I, I'm not even presenting myself like that like it's it's a total fetishized issue and I hate it I don't know where that started from I don't like is it OF I don't know but like no because it started way before that yeah because that's been a thing like Elvira yes I wanted to say like she because um that um morticia yes the, yeah. the, the, like so the dumbo boobies because everybody loves to take off <laughs> what the goth did girls. you just say i'm screaming no yeah no titty goth girls yeah no, it's not only that but like i don't even show cleavage and i still have guys come in in my and i'm just like like mm-hmm. and and they say the grossest raunchiest stuff to you or they'll be like I just want you to like step on my throat and I'm like well that might hurt honestly like you could break your neck but like it, like it's just so weird to me that a guy a stranger just happens to see you on social media or they stalk you or follow you whatever and they think that they have the permission to message you like that I am old school I'm into chivalry I'm into like the Brom Stoker kind of love of like you're gonna court my ass first and work hard for this you're not just gonna get it easy like, what makes you think you can just slide in my DMs with, like, a dirty text and I'm just going to, like, hop all over that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it makes me – and it's no. gross. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. God. Yeah. I don't know. But it's, it's – because it's almost like – because – they were the ones to bully the little goth girl. Yes. Before she blew up. Yeah. Then, then they're like, "Oh shoot, I messed up with that." No, you're probably still the same insecure little girl that you were. So you're just happy that I'm giving you attention. Please yeah. let me love you now. Yeah, it's not even oh. that too. It's also that like, you know, most of these people. Well, I know it really goes into what you just said, which is most of these guys that I even I look. Of course, I'm going to look at their profile because I'm nosy. They're not alt or goth at all. And like, nope. it's a, and they're probably, most of them, I think they're married and have kids. And it's just really gross that they're doing that to their wife. But like, I, that's why I only date guys. I, there's like a lot of running jokes where a lot of goth girls will date someone that doesn't look goth or alt. I want their like golden haired retriever boy. Exactly. I had a golden hair retriever boy and it is not the way to go. I had that too. I had someone in the military and it was just a really bad idea, honestly. But um I and honestly I did water myself down for that relationship. So I understand what you're saying. Um yeah. because I had to present myself as an army wife. I couldn't be a goth army wife, you know what I mean? But nope. But that's why, and but before that, that I only dated in the alt goth genre. And, and that's why I prefer to only date alt goth guys because they're not going to treat you on that weird, creepy, fetishized, you know, pedestal. Never had the opportunity. Yet. I, yet. Yet. I have yet to have the opportunity. Like I had people that I was interested in. And then I, again, back to the, I wasn't goth enough for the goth boys. Oh my God. Uh, so. Well, they, would, they, would like, they weren't the like, right oh, ones then, you. boo. That's why. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I've, I've lived a sad, lonely life. I'm just saying. No. You're a happy person. You're going to be great. And everything's changed. Everything's working in your favor. You have lucky girl syndrome. You know what I'm saying? 
you are manifesting that everything you. that you deserve. It's true. It's true. Like the goth subculture itself. So obviously post-punk genre came from the UK in the 1970s. That's uh, kind of like a gothic term for the wave of music that was sort of birthed. Um, and the term gothic became in relation to music itself. And it really came with the first, you know, gothic comparison of pop mainstream. 1979, Joy Vision were the pioneers of goth music. And that really goes back to everyone that's trad who's like, you have to just listen to like 70s, 80s goth music or you can't be goth. And it's just like, okay. See, there's some that say Depeche Mode isn't goth, and I think their synth waviness is 100%. Oh, they are. But that's, again, you can get in arguments. You can. And that's why you I'm can. like, I don't want to argue. I'm tired, honestly. This has been a long life. Oh, I don't have time to argue. You know, the subculture they're talking about, like Ian Curtis, who was the vocalist, um, committed suicide. And, and I think that also kind of sprung the goth culture, too, because it was showing the horror dark side of what we do experience with trauma. Yeah. Because I think because mo all of my friends that are goth are, even you, are deep people. Like, I'm an Aquarius moon. You cannot vibe with me unless you like aliens and you're like, you want to talk about the other side and you want to talk about death and dying and you're not afraid of it. And like, you've been through trauma, but like you wear your heart on your sleeve. Like, and that's how all my goth friends are. I mean, even look at like Cat and Elfie. Like, it's... um you're a deep thinker, deep thinker. So I think that the goth side, yeah, you've definitely been through trauma. And I think that that also is what sort of created, it's true. I mean, first of all, hasn't everyone been through trauma? Yeah. Why did like, if you've lived in America or <laughs> I was not expecting that. No, but like in general, we've all been through trauma. I don't know why society pretends like you have to be perfect. Like a Kardashian, like, nobody's perfect everyone's been through trauma like that's part of this life that we're living the image of the goth too of like going through trauma and i, I it is it's it's, a, it's so goth and the goth it keeps circling back to that it's a way to actually express and live your like unabashed life mm -hmm. because the it's standing it's how all of the gothic kids who look exactly the same never want to conform a middle finger it's to being, society yeah it's like it's no we're gonna live the way we want to live and that's okay and we're not gonna judge anybody for it and that's what to a point i feel like why it went a little bit darker and a little bit lack of color in the main scheme of goth is because like you can't claim it as one thing or the other because it's like honestly it's the absence of the presence yes is the darkness yep yep <laughs> but but like don't get it twisted that you can add you can be a white goth too where you're wearing all white goth um like all mm -hmm. white clothes you can be a um pastel goth where they wear pastel color it doesn't have to be all black all the time and mm -hmm. a lot of there's a, a mix up too and i don't know if this was like mixed in at some point like maybe with like prejudicism going on but some people say like oh goths are skinheads and because of that you're prejudiced against you know I, people I of think color that, that i think the skinhead thing derives from the post-punk era yeah because a like a good portion of the punk community while supposed to stand against those people tend to like use it as a ploy to be one of those yeah. people yeah um so i think that's where that portion comes from and it's also <clears throat> like people will say that you can't be darker skin toned and be goth like you have to be pale pasty. pale i'm like have you seen blade yeah yeah is yeah uh-huh no, I know. Cat, I mean, cat's half Hispanic. I'm half indigenous. Mm -hmm. Like, doesn't matter. Yes, I wear paler makeup or paler foundation, but just be yourself. You don't have to wear pale foundation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be white. You can do whatever you want. You know, like, just stop following the rules. That should be the rule. Like, don't follow the rules. Don't follow any rules. Please, mm -hmm. God, I hate rules. No, I feel like the one rule should be like, don't be a meanie, <laughs> and then and then the rest is fine. Don't be a butthole, okay? Come don't on. be a butthole. <laughs> Jeez. So gothic rock was evolved, obviously, out of the 1970s, beginning in the 1980s. Um, and then it sort of just started creating this movement as we get going. 
And um, it, it turns into this subculture, which I think kept turning into more subcultures, which once again, cyber goth. And it's just like, and I think it's cool. I think it's really cool that it keeps evolving because not all, even into goth glam, like not all genres evolve like that. Like we shouldn't be gatekeeping. We should be like, this is so cool. Like look what started from this one era of like, post-punk wave it, it just keeps going and going and going gatekeepers aren't unique to the goth culture mm -hmm. either they're part of like even like metal heads will be like oh it's a metallica and mm -hmm. they're just only slipknot you know like there's people like that in every genre yeah that's and true it just, and it's also sometimes it's people who aren't even like attuned to what's currently going on in the in the society of that mm -hmm. culture in that day because most most goth people I know are very inclusive. Mm -hmm. Well, they should and be. And yeah. they're like they should be because, as you touched on earlier, we all know what it's like to be ostracized. It's our one way to. It's our flag to say, "Hey, normally a person with bright colored hair was a safe space," mm -hmm. and it's kind of people are glomming onto it without fully understanding that we're kind of. I like how you said it in your notes here that we're like the the modern darker side of the hippie culture mm -hmm. because we a lot want just love and romance and like to be accepted. That's the stereotypes be though. Because the stereotype yeah. is like you're worshiping Satan, you're um you're satanic, you're you're summoning demons, you do witchcraft, which you know a lot a lot of people in the in the industry do or in the genre do. But not everyone. You, it's the same thing. Yeah. You just can't categorize all of them. Or, or um, you know, your parents, you should be worried because, like, your kid's goth. And, like, that's dangerous. Like, they're suicidal. They're going to unalive themselves. Or, you know. I, and here's the truth. And I'm going to tell you, like, I wasn't really going to bring this up. But, like, let's just be ourselves because that's all I've been lately. Um, you know, I grew up in Colorado. And mm -hmm. part of the reason that I couldn't be goth in my youth was because of the Columbine shooting. Uh, yeah. I was on, I, yeah, I was in eighth grade when Columbine happened. I literally was in the same district of Columbine. I grew up down the street from Columbine. I was in middle school though. And my school was, I was on lockdown the day Columbine happened. That was how close I was yeah. to it. And um, I talk about it in my book. It was a traumatic day. We we had to barricade ourselves in the room and, and block the door up. And we were watching it on the news. And we weren't released from school till like 6 or 7 o'clock that night. Um, but my point is, is that when Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris did that, or did I get it backwards? Is it Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold? Yeah, that's right. Um, they were considered goth. They went in with trench coats. They went in with guns. They They shot up the school. It also was claimed that they were playing like dark video games and killing people through get video games. And then they were listening to Marilyn Manson and Eminem. And then they got banned from the state. And so because of that, and I, look, I don't want to, I don't want to negotiate Marilyn Manson. I know he's under fire for his own thing. No. We're not, I'm not going yeah. there. Okay. I'm not going there. I'm just talking about what happened when I was in eighth grade. Um, and mm -hmm. it, it caused like, you couldn't be goth period. If I would have gone out after that happened, goth, people would have been like legitimately afraid of me. In fact, I remember at my school, I, would, I didn't go to Columbine, but I went to a sister high school and we were not allowed to wear yeah. trench coats. We weren't allowed to wear black leather coats. Like we had a strict dress code after that happened. We weren't allowed to wear black boots to our knee either because I think they had boots on that day. So like immediately you were categorized as a killer if you're goth and it sucked because here I am in my youth ready to be myself finally and I can't do it because of these two idiots that went and did this at the school down the street and so then I was I think that that stunted my growth a little bit honestly because now I'm like I know who I need to be but I literally would have to leave the state and do it somewhere else because of these these idiots you know what I mean yeah. so it's really interesting how it affects your environment too and like I think that I mean, at least in Colorado, goths were judged mm -hmm. for many years after that school shooting. Yeah. I, I mean, like, that's when I think also um, some of the talk shows started bringing on goth kids and like, why do you choose to dress like this? <laughs> do you worship? Is the something devil wrong with you of? mentally? Yeah, exactly. And you're exactly. like, exactly. No. In fact, I no. think a lot of my goth friends are really smart, like high IQ people, including you. Yeah. And. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to go. 
<laughs> you're, you're like, here we go. I, I have opinions on Columbine happened on my birthday. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so antisocial behavior, people. right? Like, so you're because you're goth, you're antisocial and you're weird and like, you know, and it sucks because it's just like, dude, like, it shouldn't be like this. This shouldn't be what it's about. You know what I mean? But here we are. And exactly. so carrying on, keep going. Um, just talking about, you know, people looked at goths as like society's rejects. Right. And like it became this subculture. And I think at the time when it happened, probably if you put yourself in the 70s and 80s, that's an accurate statement. Right. Because you're really weird coming out wearing black eyeshadow, black makeup, black contour, black lipstick crazy hair and, and yeah it's also it's like you think about it coming from the hippie area hippie early 70s bright colors bright fashion and then you have that like in between of the and you're like transitioning into the hair metal rock era where it's like darker but also bright so it's like i think it's also like that direct like bam right in your face of what also scared people coming out of the 70s maybe that's it's what like, makes um gen x mad is that they went through a struggle creating it and then now it's so much more accepted and they wish that it was you know times right you didn't have to fight for your position yeah. now it's just okay you can do yeah. what you want with it yeah it's a free-for-all you can just whatever you can just call yourself god you're like okay all right you didn't go through my trauma <laughs> i am screaming i literally can't it's so true <laughs> If you if you guys even understood if you're goth out there and you you've had social media oh my god the things that people say to us it just I had a video went viral right and I think it was like literally like six hundred or six hundred eighty thousand views or something crazy or I can't remember what it was and it was the black it was me doing goth makeup goth glam to black veil brides oh see but black veil brides is also very. Um, wishy washy when it in itself. I when think that they're TLC cute. Here, I just think they, like I, I was originally a Black Veil Brides fan since Knives and Pens. Yeah. I will admit when they came here for TOT mm -hmm. in Oshkosh, they ended up getting Rona and uh, they had to drop off. Uh -huh. And so many people walked out and didn't go to the show because, because emotionless? they were gone. <gasps> but it's just, so they, they're, you either love them or you hate them. So I think that's also probably a contributing factor to why people, so you got multi-gatekeeped. Oh God, <laughs> oh my God. I didn't know it was gonna You're go. Like trans I didn't know it was gonna right go now. viral. And it was, and oh my God. <laughs> and, and it's, first of all, look, if you, you either like Andy Black or you don't, like, you know, he's really mm -hmm. weird. I know he's connected to Scientology, so that's a whole nother, I don't care. Like, whatever, whatever floats your boat, man. You know what I mean? Like, go float your boat. I think Scientology is weird, but you you get it. You know what I mean? Like, At least he's not a drunk jerkwad to his people most anymore. He's so quirky and strange. Like, I think that's why I like Andy, you know what I mean? But like, people are like, oh, this is goth music now? This is, and I'm like, okay, oh god, I didn't know it was gonna go viral. Like I swear, I'm sorry. Jeez. The Cure has a very oh. small set list. Okay, <laughs> you have to I've already it. used all of the Cure. I don't know what to do next. Okay, I already used Sisters of Mercy. Oh, okay, my Cure video got five likes on it. Okay, <laughs> we gotta expand. I need more options, people, okay? Well, you, Gen X will know how to push the like button, okay? <laughs> you guys just burst my bubble. You don't make anything happy. God. Oh, God. But, um... Yeah, and it's so <laughs> funny because they did... It's so funny, too, because I did really dark makeup that for that video. I did, like, yeah. dark black. And, like, I had, like, a crown that was spikes. And, I mean, it was dark. So it's funny because they came on to complain. They didn't say a word about my makeup. They just want to talk about how bad the music was. So it's like, okay. It's like to watch the video on mute, my guy. <laughs> Pretty much. Just like, shh, shh, quiet. Um, so anyway, like then we're moving into like the electronic music and, you know, influx. And it's once again, just growing and expanding into like what gothic music synth wave, you know, like. It just grew, and I do. I like. There's some really cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like, but once again, I don't think you should have to just be listening to gothic music. And I just, I think it's important to, you know, that we talk about this because we both understand what it's like to be told, oh, do this but don't do that, and then do this but don't do that. And it's like, for a second, you question yourself. Like, wait, so should I just be listening to like goth music? Like, but like, but I like 
other stuff, you know? So I guess yeah. the point of this stream really at the baseline is like, if you think you're goth, just be goth. Yes, respect mm -hmm. the culture. Yes, understand where it comes from. Learn the history. But like... Also, if you choose to be goth, doesn't mean you have to be goth all the time. I, I can't. Not... That's a lot of work. Yeah. Most of the time, I like I posted a video of it on TikTok where I'm in like my normal goth attire. Mm -hmm. And then in at the end of it, I'm in my scrubs and my everyday wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I look a hundred percent different mm -hmm. but it's i through and through i still align with like horror and um, dark romance me too. and all of that so it's werewolves like, where you are in your and werewolves <laughs> give me a werewolf in london uh, I? yeah i'm just saying um, have i made it clear yet i'm just saying um, um but poor ashley it, saw it it's fine everything's fine um, no, I'm the same. I mean, like, we were literally on set in a graveyard. Same. Like, I, yeah. I, every day is Halloween for me. Every day is Halloween. I may not look Halloween every day because sometimes I just want my joggers, you know? But, like, I, every day is Halloween. And it's always been that way. You know what I mean? And, and I, you know, I'm not, I definitely don't consider myself vampire goth, but most of my friends are either, um, Ashley's the only cyber goth I know. She's that cool. But yeah, I, I go through cyber and vampire a lot. Mm -hmm. I've actually made a recent promise to myself that mm -hmm. if I go to the dentist and I don't have any cavities in a year, I'm going to get my permanent baby fangs. How put cute. In. Baby so fangs. Excited. That would be cute. Yeah. I wouldn't trust myself with those. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that sounded dark. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, six, six years of celibacy. <laughs> um, carrying on. Uh, give me the face. Jesus. Um, oh my god, people are gonna be like, this is a cider crystal I've never seen before. And that's exactly why we're doing this podcast. Because now I get yes. to be my full other self, other than just, you know, <laughs> producer paranormal crystal. Bella Lugosi's Dead, obviously that was huge in 1979 yeah. England. It's that's probably one of my favorite songs, honestly. I like that one. Yeah, it is good. Um, I've used that way too many times on TikTok, honestly. I've got to retire that <laughs> way too many times. Um, even you can even um, go back and, and relate to Gothic to the Renaissance. Like I said, even I think a little mm -hmm. bit of Viking, a little bit of Nordic, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, and I just think it's really gathering inspiration from all of these things, even horror and then creating, you know, an all black heavy eyeliner sort of image of like what you want. You want to look cool, man. You know what I mean? It's all about the eyes. Most yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, it is. And black, black lipstick. Mm hmm really oh that's something i mean i know we're going to talk about fashion later but a lot of people think that in order to be goth you have to be rich how do you feel about that uh no yeah exactly <laughs> um because a lot a good portion of my wardrobe is thrifted i love um, to f i love vintage my, oh. yeah i okay so i either have i have one goth shop um, local. They're the Alley in Chicago. I absolutely adore them and I will spend all of my big girl money to buy nice clothes, mm. but that's because I've worked really hard to buy nice clothes. Mm -hmm. But most of the clothes I have are from sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I have I was a very large child and I got smaller so I can use my old clothes now. Yeah. <laughs> and so most of the stuff I have is from middle school and it's <clears> like <throat> old fishnets old lace dresses your fishnets layering. have la lasted that long you're goth the more they rip the better they look i get annoyed when they rip honestly like if there's a couple i'm good but like me i also have dogs though it depends on the look i'm going for yeah oh. if i'm going for more of like a rugged grungy look i will go i do enjoy the ripped but then I'll layer them with something else yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, or if I'm going for like a cleaner, cutesy look, mm -hmm. I do agree that the normal like See, and goth glam is better. Shit, man. Why did I have to so get... For your aesthetic, straight tights would be better. But I can keep my stuff forever. Yeah. I only recently started my shoe collection this year because I, I work three jobs. I came to the conclusion that I'm just like, I actually need to spend my money because what else am I going to so do? You're a Capricorn it? moon. You like to work. You like to get that bag. Yep. Yep. Capricorns like their work and their money. I'm a Taurus sun. <laughs> I like to work and I like my money. I get you. 
Uh, I, like, I got all the double monies. Oh, I'm a tourist son, so I just, well, you are too, but I like shopping. It's bad. Yep. Oh my God. And then I'm a Cancer Rising, so mm. I just like to be home with all my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I'm with all of my I stuff. I will never say no to a comfort item, like a blanket. Give me a new blanket. I love everything. <laughs> Honestly, I could just shop for days. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm a shopaholic. You no, know, but fine. also capitalism sucks. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You mean everything at the grocery store is $5 right now? Yeah, it's great. Um, mm. Oh, God. But no, you don't have to be rich to be goth. No. Yes, to fit the proper aesthetic, sometimes like the Pinterest, the Instagram level um, stuff. Yes, but a lot of the culture came from DIY. Like you said, it derives from Mm post-punk. So everything is about layering, um, making things put together you can go to walmart as long as it's black it's that's all that matters like go to target as long as there's a black dress bam you've got goth go Mm -hmm. get a harness off of basics yeah basics tank top long sleeve black long pants black skirt and then like different types of tights tights are normally like ten dollars six to ten dollars a, like a set of tights mm-hmm. you don't have to be expensive and makeup like you you did on your tiktok the other day a, a like a, a dollar, dollar tree, dollar tree haul. haul it can get expensive we have some expensive items i'm not gonna lie i want to get into sing. latex but like i haven't um, yet because yeah. it's expensive also i just don't know if i can lube myself up honestly i think i'll feel gross <laughs> i'm gonna be real i think i'm gonna itch I'm allergic to silicone and latex, or like, uh, yeah, silicone. I'm allergic to silicone. I prefer PVC over, like, There is the, a $600 like, latex dress that I'm looking at right now, and I'm just like, please. Mm, I want a good please. latex dress. My, I work at, I also, so one of my jobs is at a lingerie store, mm-hmm. and I'm, tr- I, every time we're doing an order, I can't constantly am looking to see if we can get a, a good latex dress in yeah. from one of our distributors, and it's so difficult because like all of them are like they're they're not good i i am a metalcore fan me too right me now. too that's <laughs> honestly most of the the um concerts i've all, ever been to is just metal yeah what was the first concert you ever went to no you don't you're not gonna do this to me right now no you're not gonna do this do i have to answer okay fine i'm gonna be tough was it? it was hansen okay. Yeah, you know, you want no seriously. I was in love with Taylor and Zach Hansen, obsessed. Like they were everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Of course, it was the long hair, like you know, the alt hair. And I remember being a kid, and they were like, they look like girls. And I'm like, yeah, well, you don't have good taste. So that's what I think about that. You know what? I like guys with long hair, like werewolves. <clears throat> you know, I drop it again. All right. So I think yeah, I made my time to get a haircut. I think that's exactly what's going on with that hat. But you know what? It's fine. Just let it go to Jesus. Um, hat gate. And that's the tea. And that's all I've got. And not everyone is a fetishizing goth here. So please, no. you, don't make me throw up, okay? And I've been celibate for six years. So you're not getting in this. You know what I'm saying? So just... Unless you're will. Uh, <coughs> we're wolf. <coughs> it's fine. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So, any, what do you have anything else to add? What we, did I miss anything? No, I think we covered overall a very squirrely version of what it takes to be a god, and that we're also not sad. Don't no. don't go by rules. The first rule is don't be a creeper. Don't be a meanie. Don't be a meanie <laughs> and just be yourself. And like, and ugh, don't let people gatekeep you. Please, God. And you don't have to do your makeup all of the time to still consider yourself a spooky babe. And next week, we're going to talk about some goth fashion, which will be really fun. And like our favorite stores and where to get inspiration from. Yes. Ashley, you are amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. We had so much fun. I, this was fun. Wasn't this fun? This, I, I had a really good time. Yeah, and you look you look so adorable, too. Like, oh, God, she's Thank so cute. You. with her, her Beetlejuice locks, though, man. I'm telling you, when I saw that, They're- that you're, that green is just you, isn't it? Like, so weird yeah. how it's, like, adopted you. Like, that neon green is, like, that's Ashley right there. That's my, that's my colors. 
it's so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. I had so much fun hanging out with you. This is gonna be so much fun. Like this is the best decision we ever made. Oh, Ashley started a YouTube channel. Yeah, theoretically. So I'm going to make sure I post that below so you guys can go follow her because she's going to be posting all of her cool content. I hope she sticks with dance and cyber goth stuff. You're going to do a little bit of makeup, you said, too? Yeah, there's going to be makeup. There's going to be concert vlogs and uh, my opinion on, like, what concerts and stuff to sing because, obviously, I have a huge passion for music and everything. And every time I do my cyber goth looks, I totally go off inspiration from Ashley because she does the coolest, big, huge cyber goth makeup. So I am dying personally. I have been bugging her for months to do makeup tutorials, haven't I? (laughs) Yes, you have. It's so intimidating, though. I want to do a good job for you guys. Yeah, but you're going to do great. You're going to do great. You you already do great. You know what I mean? Like, you're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Ashley. And I can't wait to see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was editing this. I just wanted to give one little final thought on this discussion that Ashley and I had yesterday, which is, although the gatekeeping sucks with the goth community, and, and if you're in the goth community, you know. You know, like we all have experienced it. Although the gatekeeping sucks, I have to say, like, I have made some amazing friends in this community. It's really like you have each other's back. And it was really hard for me to get used to at first because I was divulged into the paranormal community for so many years online with, you know, celebrity presence and in film production. And that community is so dog-eat-dog. You don't back each other up. You don't trust each other. You don't know who's going to out who next. Um, It's really just about tearing each other down to get to the top. And the goth community is not like that at all. It's very like, we do this together. If you need help, you call me. We're a team. We're a unit. We work as one. We're alternative. We understand what it's like to be the outcast. And I'm just so proud to be a part of, of a community like that. Like, there's going to be gatekeeping in every community, you know, but I don't know. I finally feel at home with the goth community. So if you know, you know. Once again, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed my lifestyle podcast. You're definitely getting to know me behind the scenes. Sorry if there was a TMI, but this was so much fun. Please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Also, support us by downloading the stream on any you know, anywhere that you support podcasts. So right now it's currently on Apple and Spotify. The more downloads we get, the better. They will keep boosting us through the algorithm. Um, So even if you watch this on YouTube, please go download us somewhere else. It should be everywhere on all streaming devices, all streaming platforms in the next week or two. I just have to get some more uploaded so that I can keep going. But um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for getting on this journey with me of my lifestyle podcast. If you have any requests, please make sure you leave them below. We love to hear your feedback. So please leave us some comments. If you enjoyed any of this stream, give us a thumbs up and we will catch you guys next week. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.